who won and who lost the final signing day? Well, everybody saw Terry. Uh, is it Bussy or Busey? Bussy. He goes and signs with Texas A&M. He's a Texas guy. I think everybody kind of saw this one coming. Um, from what I understand, he's going to be playing defense at Texas A&M. He's going to be playing in the secondary. Um, this was a guy who was a five-star athlete, which means he could play multiple positions. He played both ways in high school, and it, it was thought that he could step in and play receiver at any school or secondary at any school, period. Um, big, big pickup for Texas A&M. What do you think about the Bussy announcement? And um, as a Georgia fan, selfishly, I was – just praying that that Kirby was going to pull out some smart magic, um, but but it wasn't to be with this one uh, as opposed to the Texas A and M Aggies, and they continue um, with with the momentum that they've got on the recruiting trail and and everywhere else, pretty much. Yeah, I think that you're still seeing the benefit of Texas A and M being early in the, that coaching carousel. You know, they're able to go in and establish relationships with the recruits that they already had committed and go and establish relationships with transfer portal players that they didn't have a relationship with, or maybe Mike Elko didn't have a relationship with and, and kind of pull together a pretty solid class. Whereas, you know, Kalen DeBoer at Alabama, for instance, is, is struggling to kind of do that in, in, in some ways he did have a big, a big win with Ryan Williams uh, this sign and day. I thought that was huge for, for the Alabama Crimson Tide, but for Texas A&M, you know, they're getting, from, from all accounts, a, a super athletic player, but he's only about 5'10 and about 185 pounds. So not the biggest, but my understanding is that his play is really big. Um, he's just, he's a guy who can, who can play anywhere, do anything like a four sport athlete in high school, just an absolute stud, super athletic. And uh, he, he's going to be fun to watch it. This was a huge win for Texas A&M. Um, I don't know that Georgia was ever really into it it seemed like if he was going to go to another school it would have been lsu but um you know i i don't think that lsu is necessarily a loser because they didn't get get bussy you know he he would have helped their class out but it would have been a bigger loss for texas a&m than it would have been than it was a loss for texas for lsu um lsu pulls in a fantastic class i thought you know and and they ended up fourth in the sec which isn't isn't exactly great but when you're behind georgia alabama and texas you know that doesn't sound so bad either so i, I think that this was a successful um class for lsu as well but a huge win on national signing day the biggest win of the day for mike elko and texas a&m yeah yeah and a, and a few other teams uh florida state picks up amari williams today the number 225 uh linebacker in the espn 300 um, so that was a nice pickup today. Texas A&M signs uh, wide receiver Ashton Bethel Roman. How about that name? <laughs> Ashton Bethel Roman. Um, I think he's that, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possibly uh, has some Christian descent. Maybe maybe um, Catholic. That sounds like a super Catholic name. Yeah, dude. He said a lot of Hail Marys, bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but – all in all, Georgia ends up with the number one class. Alabama, number two, three, Ohio State, four, Oregon, five, Texas. That's as far as the ESPN uh, ratings go. Uh, LSU picks up Dominic McKinley. Um, you you had kind of spoke on the, the Oregon wide receiver. Um, what was his name? Blair something? Mm -hmm. Gatlin B Blair. Gatlin uh, Blair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gatlin. That's a, that's a new one. Yeah. Gatlin, yeah. Gun. Yeah, his grandpa, great grandpa, great great grandpa, uh, made the Gatlin gun, and that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, it all no, makes I, sense. I made that up, but <laughs> um, that would be cool, though. That would be pretty cool. Look, I, anytime there's a white badass wide receiver, I'm like, wow, look at that guy, you know. But yeah. and, and he ran track. I mean, he was whooping ass in track. I mean, so that's a smart player, dude. Smart player. Really uh, really heads up guy there. Heads up. Um, he's not going to contribute this year, but that was a big pickup for Oregon. Um, you spoke about Alabama picking up the five-star wide receiver there. I think that was a big deal. Um, Alabama still ends up with a really, really nice class. So, all in all, I think I think DeBoer did a decent job, hold talent that they were already planning on signing. 
Um, especially considering how late in the cycle it was whenever he figured out that he'd be moving over from Washington. So, yeah. um, and we, we continue to really not know, excuse me, if Ryan Grubb is going to be going to the NFL. So we're, okay. we're still trying to figure that situation out. Alabama may be without an offensive coordinator here shortly. Ohio State may be without an offensive coordinator here shortly. Um, that's not a topic that we set up in the show to talk about today, but um, apparently Bill O'Brien is uh, in pretty much down to the details with Boston College uh, to be their next head coach as um, their head coach, who was in our hot seat um, list, he, he ended up taking off, taking off to the NFL. So Bill O'Brien being a Boston guy, that's going to be a job that it looks like he's going to take. So we are not even done with all the coaching <laughs> carousel stuff. So we, we are, we're signing talent and these guys don't even know who they're playing for. You yeah. know, the, the whole schedule of college football is completely off. It is just completely off. We're going to need to start these seasons in August, early August to get everything done by the time the end of the semester, because in college football, you, you got something you deal with in this sport that you don't deal with in other sports, and that's semesters. And that stuff's important. These kids still have to go to school. You have to go to school to play there. So um, we, we've got to figure out the timing of all this stuff because it's not fair to the kids. And now if if Ryan Grubb leaves or or – you know, somebody leaves the school, now they've got another open window, you know, to transfer. And it's just like, my goodness gracious, dude. I'm, it, it's hard to keep up with, and it's it seems very sloppy and disorganized. But maybe maybe that's how college fans like it. I don't know. You Let us know in the comment section what you think. Um, anything else on Oregon, Mason? Or, excuse me, on the recruiting uh, stuff before we kind of close that down for a little while? What? We'll, this will be the last time we talk recruiting for a little bit, uh, unless there's just a massive shakeup or or flip slash decommitment, right? Right, and, and I just want to kind of drive home the point that Alabama retained Ryan Williams. Right, uh, this is a massive recruit. He's he's um, constantly compared to Devonte Smith, similar build, a little bit taller, but 165 pounds. You know, about the same. Uh, size and and he's got that twitchiness and everything about him reminds me of Devonte Smith and I just think that this is a huge get for Kalen DeBoer at Alabama as he begins his Crimson Tide era. You know this is this is what you need. This is a player who comes in and kind of rounds this class out um, after you know losing a bunch in the transfer portal, of course. But this is by far the the most talented. Uh, roster that Kalen DeBoer will ever have, and and he brings in the number two overall class. Um, I, I just think that you, you really need to pay attention to Alabama now. And, and I know that I've kind of flip flopped on, you know, on Kalen DeBoer a little bit as to, um, as to what I think of the hire for Alabama, but it's starting to look like a, a pretty dang good hire. I mean, you, you saw what he did at, at Washington in two seasons with players who he didn't recruit. Now he's going to come in and, and immediately upgrade his roster. I think a big key, though, to this is 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 Ryan Grubb, like you mentioned. Is yeah. he going to go to the NFL? Because if he does, that changes everything. Look, Kalen DeBoer has come up with his guys at every single step. He's he's brought his own you know coaching staff with him everywhere he's gone, like a lot of coaches do. But – I think that it's really important that uh, Ryan Grubb come and coach at Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important as well. And um, I, Alabama, I think, signed the second most top 300 recruits in this class behind Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, in, like, I think it was 18 of them, 16 of them, something like that. I mean, lots 18. of talent. Huh? 18. Georgia 18. had 21. Right. There's tons of talent in this class. Is it an upgrade? I I don't know that it's an upgrade because I mean what they lost. You know, I don't think I, I don't but my point is it doesn't need to upgrade. The Alabama talent level doesn't have to get better and DeBoer is a coach that is known for doing more with less. What is yeah. he going to do more what is he going to do when he has more talent than he's ever had? That's that's really kind of the question. But in that same breath, he's going to play the hardest schedule he's ever seen in his life. 
Mm-hmm. They, they had a lot of games that they would have lost if they were in the SEC this past year. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and not not just saying with that roster, but I, I'm saying from a coaching standpoint, I thought that there were a lot of, of mistakes that were made, you know, yeah. um, in in Washington season last year in the Pac-12. You try to make those same mistakes in the SEC, you, you're you're probably going to get your lunch eaten. So, yeah. Um, I think that he's still got to develop, but but I, I also think that this is a guy, like you said, who has done a lot with very little, and now you're going to walk into a wealth of talent. I, I'm I'm really anxious to see what he does, not necessarily this year, but year two, I, I think that you can circle year two and say, yeah, they, they should be uh, competing again in the, in the SEC. Well, and he comes in in the right year, too, because even if he doesn't win the SEC, and loses a couple of games, got a very good chance of going to the college football playoff still. So, and by I, the I end think, of the year, I mean that that roster is going to look completely different. You know, people are yeah. the, the team is going to understand what they're trying to do and the concepts of on offense and defense. It's a lot different. Uh, it, it's a new ball game, I think, once the playoff rolls around in a twelve team format. Yeah.